Hello everyone and welcome to another science video with the Mass Center Regional Library. I'm Ms. Stephanie, one of the children's librarians, and for this month's experiment we're going to be exploring a few concepts of where a trigger is or the device that sets off a mechanism or a machine, trajectory where how we can change the path an object takes in the air, and stored energy and moving energy, also known as kinetic energy. And to do those, we're going to make a trigger launcher. And this trigger launcher doesn't seem like much, you know, but with some practice, and we're going to use soft objects, you can make it launch. And for this experiment, there's only too many things for this one. Um, the, let's start, you're going to need some masking tape to put it together. I'm using color to make it a little more fun. You're going to need three dice or objects that are about the same size as dice. A rubber band, but I got two just in case one of them snaps while I'm trying to make it. A large clothespin. Four craft sticks, large craft sticks. And if you want to decorate it, um, you, probably, you can use some markers as well. And then I got a pom-pom and a marshmallow to use as my ammo. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's start making our trigger launcher. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to make a base for it. So we're going to take two of the craft sticks and we're going to put them... So they're big enough for a dice to be on it. And once you have that, take a piece of your tape and wrap it around. And it doesn't have to be fancy or neat, but just the point is to make it secure. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. I've got my base. Now let's make the top part and we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna make sure it overlaps for enough for the dice piece to be on it. So I'm gonna get another piece of tape and I'm going to put it under, wrap it around, and that piece is now secure as well. Now for the top piece, we need to add the clothespin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lie it here and we're gonna first secure the back part of it because it makes the next part a little easier to do. So we'll put it in here and we'll tape that securely. You have to, a little tricky getting it in there and then tuck it in. And then what we're gonna do, because like see this is coming up a little right here, we want that to stay to the craft sticks. So what I do is with my left hand, cause I'm a righty, I put it here and then I'm going to put this in the middle so it will also be on the base. There we go. And there we go. There's a little excess, but I will just, I'm just going to rip it off and then put this down. So I've got my top and I've got my bottom. Now we need to add the dice to the bottom to make it stable. And one way that I found that made it a lot easier to do is, is this is, I rolled some tape, I put one in the middle, and I stuck the dice on it. So when we attach the bottom and the top together, it'll be a lot easier to do. And so I'm gonna put one at the end, and I'm gonna put one more piece on the back and put the last dice piece too. And just make sure that it lines up evenly. And this one needs to be moved up a little. There we go. And so now we have our two parts and now we need to put them together. So I started with the middle, which made it a little easier for me to do the back and the front. So let me get another piece of tape. Okay, and so I'm gonna wrap it around like I did with the top and the bottom and hold, you gotta hold it steady. You may need an adult or a friend to help you because it is a little tricky because you want these to be even, but I think I'm seem to be okay right now. All right, and now that the middle is attached, you're going to do the same thing to the front and the back. And the back will be a little tricky. I'll start with that one because you have the clothespin to worry about. And you don't want to tape over the clothespin because this is your trigger, which is going to launch your pom-pom or your marshmallow. So it's a bit loose right now, but we're going to put this in the back, wrap it around, Wrap this around, 
and just press it down to make sure it sticks and stays. So, okay, the back is stable. And now I just gotta do the front. So let me get that one last piece of tape here for the front dice. And wrap it around, attach it, and then press it down. And, all right, so we got everything. We just need to attach the rubber band to the front. And what we is, we want it to be able to peel over and get all the way to the clothespin. So we're just going to tape one end to the front part of the dice. So we get one last piece of tape. I kind of maybe want to tear this one in half to make it a little easier. And so you can see it's a little, you may need an adult or friend for this too. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tape and put it over like this. And then I'm going to put another piece of tape on the bottom so it'll stay. And let me make sure that the rubber band can stretch. Yep, the rubber band can stretch all the way to here. So, yes. So we got re ready. So we just need to get a pom-pom and start launching. And I'm going to put the camera back a bit so you can see a little about what I'm going to do. Oh, and also if you want to decorate your launcher that you can do that with markers or crowns as well. So let me back up the camera a bit. Okay, now so for to use your trigger launcher, we're going to use a soft object like a pom-pom and you don't want to use anything hard and you definitely do not want to shoot this at any living creatures so no people or animals but that is why i've made some targets for us to use and it'll be a great way to use your trigger launcher and you still can have some fun in the process so let me show you how to load your trigger launcher so we got this right here you see the clothespin you're going to open it up you're going to use your hand, other hand to put the rubber band in the middle and clamp down Next, you're going to want to use your soft object. Oh, I twisted my rubber band, so let me try again. Okay, this time it's not twisted because you need to leave a little area to put your ammo, either your pom-pom or your marshmallow. And then all you got to do is release it. So, oh, it hit the target. And this is great because you can do a lot of fun games with this. As you can see, I made a target out of paper. You can also see if you can try to shoot your pom-pom into one of those rings. And if you want to make it a challenge, you can make it a smaller ring. So let me show you how to launch it one more time. Let's see if I can get it into the bigger ring. So we're going to do it back. Make sure it's in. It's not twisted. Put the pom-pom in. And then we're going to aim. Oh, I was close. But that just gives you an idea of all the different games and fun things you can do. And you can also back up and see like how just how far you can launch your pom-pom. And see how the trajectory or the path that the object takes in the air goes. You can like point it up high. You can point it here. And you can just experiment and see what works best to launch your pom-pom. All right, well, I hope you had a good time making your trigger launcher and have fun experimenting as you try to see if you can change the trajectory of the of the pom-pom or marshmallow as you work with shooting it. And I had a couple books related to this. The first is Archery with the bow and arrow reminded me a lot of the trigger launcher. So this is Outdoor Adventures Archery by Adam Klein. And the thing may actually may be a simple short. You're just shooting, hitting a target. That's it. No. It is a really interesting sport, and the bow and arrow has been used since the ancient Egyptians, like over almost 10,000 years ago. And I learned a lot about reading this book. Like, there's three types of bows, the long bow, the recurve bow, and the compound bow, and how, like, arrows can be made to better hit their target. I learned there's instructions in here how to use your bow. There's, like, information about how um, archery is an Olympic sport. You can even, like do archery while you're on skis but do not try that without an adult's permission of course <laughs> um and what i was really helpful is there is a glossary of all the archery terms that if you want to learn how to use a sport it's a really good guide to help you make it click more quickly and the pictures are great too let me find the one that i like the most where it goes through and talks about 
the breakdown of an arrow and how it can be used to better hit a target. So if you're interested in archery, I highly recommend this book. And then for a nice story, I decided to pick Arusha and the Song of Death. And this book is written by Roshani Shokasi. And what is great about this is you, if you guys like the Percy Jackson series, uh, Rick Ridahan, he didn't write this book, but he helped edit it and he helped like promote it. And it's about Indian mythology, which I didn't know a lot about before I read this book. And in this particular book, the Indian god of love, his bow and arrow are missing, which is why I thought it would tie into this. And chaos ensues. There's a lot of conflict on Earth. And our main character, Aru, has been framed as the culprit who stole the bow and arrow. And so the guy said that if the bow is not returned within 10 days, then he will be permanently banished from the realm, other world, which is like the Indian spiritual realm. And this is a very great story. Like it just, it's like, per, like she's, it's not the person who wrote Percy Jackson, but it's a kind of a similar style, very interesting story, fun characters, humor, and there is a great glossary in the back with all the Indian myths and gods, because I had to look at it many times because I would get a little confused, but once you get into the story, it, it's great. I would highly recommend it, if, especially if you like books about mythology. So, thank you again for joining me for another science video. I look forward to sharing more experiments with you soon. Have a good day. Bye.